afternoon. If you would like to pull it a little closer so you can actually hear what's going on, it might be helpful. Just pull up this way, you can sit on the field, it's fine. Just pull up this way a little bit. It's all gonna happen right here. So you look in this direction. Uh, I can hold her. Thank you very much. Uh -oh. Can't knock the camera. I can hold it's okay. her. Thank you very much. It's okay. Oh, I may have to ask those girls to do that, but not now. Hang it. Hey, babe. How are you? I missed you. Can I help you out? Mm -hmm. No, I just keep it running. Yeah. 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 Of students, parents, and staff. This is important to us, and we want to show tribute to them and what they've meant to the school. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and I'll get it started. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you for this beautiful day. Provides an opportunity to honor two men that have had significant impacts on our lives. We are grateful for those impacts. And we're thankful, Father, that we can share today what that meant to us. Bless this time together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. How was school today? Somebody unplugged. Was it good? Uh-huh. What? It needs to be turned a little bit. Here, turn it this way a little bit. So, uh, -uh other hand, move it this way to turn. There you go. Right there, okay? Perfect. Okay. Test, one, two, three, four, five. All right, is it working here? I will not move now. It's my privilege today to share with you a brief statistical summary of the accomplishments of these two men. There's much more to their lives than that, and you will be hearing about that in just a minute. Okay. John Spracklin came to Providence 1995 to teach Bible and to coach soccer, two of his great loves. His first season with our ladies soccer program, they won one game, lost 11, tied one. For the next five years, they made the state playoffs each year consecutively. Over time, John and his ladies earned the second highest winning percentage for any team at Providence for all sports at 68.3%. That's 71 wins, 33 losses, and two ties. That means a third of his losses over six years were in his first season. In his 1999 season, 18 and three. They won the first Providence Georgia High School State Championship in any sport, and certainly for soccer, that year by beating the number one ranked team in the state, Westminster. Yeah. Coach Bracklin was named the Coach of the Year in 1999. He had a number of girls play in college, and one played professionally. John and his wife, Jenny, moved to Miami when he felt the Lord was calling him to minister to college athletes, which he did until the Lord took him home in an unexpected way, but in a quiet, peaceful way in September of 2006. The second coach we want to honor today is Johnny Williamson. And I start out by calling him Johnny because he was a student here before he was ever a coach. He graduated from Providence in 1997 after finishing his study at Samford, he came back to Providence to teach and to coach. He taught government and economics and took over the girls' soccer program in 2003. 
His teams recorded an 80 win, 29 loss, five record over seven years. And they have the highest winning percentage for any team at Providence at 73.4%. They earned the second soccer state championship for Providence in 2007 with a 21 and one record. 15 of his players went on to play in college and the Lord called him home Thanksgiving of 2010. Both of these men certainly impacted soccer, but they also impacted lives. And today we've asked two of their players to share. Sarah Steinman Meadows will share first, and then she'll be uh, followed by Jordan Godfordson. And then our associate head of school, Sean Chapman, will conclude the presentation. Sarah. So much. I um, am truly humbled and honored to be able to share with you about Coach Spracklin and his influence in my life and the life of my teammates. Um, man, there are so many memories already just being back here and um, being back on this field and seeing some of my teammates. It is, it is awesome. Um, some of the best memories of my life came from this field and came from this place and this school. And so I am so thankful to be able to share with you about Coach Spracklin today. He was an unbelievable coach. He influenced my life greater than anybody has. Um, and this team was my favorite team that I played on um, throughout all the teams that I did. And much of that was due to Coach Spracklin. He created an environment that we loved and that we wanted to be a part of. He loved to have fun. He loved to play practical jokes on us, and we loved to play practical jokes on him. Um, he truly cared and knew about each one of us, and so that's why we wanted to give him our best. He really emphasized the importance of team unity and team bonding, and we worked hard for one another, and we played together well. Um, Coach knew our strengths and weaknesses and our potential as a team. And when we were out on this field, he sharpened our strengths, he improved our weaknesses, and he maximized our potential. One of my teammates said that he expected the best out of us. He really could see our full potential as a team and as individuals. And it's true, he knew our potential. He had an unbelievable way of knowing each girl's skill set and putting them in a position on the field where they would contribute the most and impact the team the most. He believed in us, and that's why we wanted to give him our best. More than coach on this field, he had unbelievable character, and the way he lived his life had the greatest influence on me. There was nothing assuming or pretentious about him, but he was completely humble in heart, but he had a confidence that came from being rooted in Christ. He was a teacher at heart, and he was committed to teaching us about the love of Christ and about the adventure and joy of walking in a relationship with him. One of my teammates said it best. She said, he was sold out for the Lord, passionate for him. He cared about discipling us and our hearts first before any school grade or any game score. His love for the Lord was an example to all of us. As I look back on Coach Bracklin's life, he faithfully used the place that the Lord had put him and the gifts that he had to point towards Christ. The most significant truth that he taught me was that no matter where you are or what you're doing, you are always influencing those around you. He let the joy of Christ shine through him so brightly here that it pointed and drew everybody that he knew to the Lord. Coach steadfastly used his position to point towards Christ. When I think about the way he influenced me and my teammates and the students here and the teachers here, we can't ever forget him. And it's amazing that today we get to stand out here and people that don't even know him get to learn about him and we're still pointed towards Christ and glorifying him. There was a verse that I read recently in Acts that reminded me of Coach Spracklin. I wanted to share it with you all today. It said he encouraged us all to remain faithful to the Lord with a steadfast purpose. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Thank you so much.
two to three minutes, I think, is just incredibly difficult to talk about both of these coaches. And uh, I told Dr. Vaught that earlier, and he said, no one's going to kick you off the soccer field, so <laughs> excuse us. Just a little bit longer than we probably should, but it really feels like yesterday that that I was out here and I was making so many memories with my team and with Coach. Um, just like Sarah's team, they won a state championship. That as well, and there is nothing like that feeling of winning a state championship. It is amazing. Um, but when I'm out here on this soccer field, that is honestly the last thing that I think about. I think about a man, I can still see him over there right now, and I think about a man that impacted me, impacted every single girl on that team, impacted every student that he taught, anybody that talked to him for more than two seconds, he impacted their lives. and, and continue to do that. I am honestly the person that I am today um, because of him. He he challenged us just like Coach Bracklin on the field. We wanted to play our best every day for him, but he challenged us more spiritually than anything, and that was the most important. We knew every day that he cared more about us as individuals and um, women of, of Christ than anything, than any soccer game, than any state championship. Uh, we knew that. Um, one of my favorite things about Coach uh, was that he wasn't just a coach. He wasn't just a player. He was a best friend sometimes. And I was joking around with Julie Jordan earlier. I kid you not, we used to make up excuses of why we needed to get out of class 20, 30 minutes early just to go down to his classroom and talk to him. Um, even if he had a class going on during that time, ask everyone that we would just peer over and, hey coach, you know we're gonna come in and most of the time he'd say, no, I got a class, you gotta leave. But that was him. He would give us his honest opinion about everything and I valued that so much. And to have a coach that truly cared more about you as an individual and cared more about you and your spiritual life is so, so very rare. And we get that with all coaches here. Um, but again, he impacted me and impacted every single one of the girls that he coached more, more than anything. And I wish I, I would give back anything. I would to see him over there right now. And I can still see him with his Chick-fil-A sweet tea in hand and, and practicing his bicicletas and, you know, as but there's no way you're going to get that. There's no way. And he would attempt them every single time. And just the laughter and the smiles, that's, that's what I remember. And I will never forget it. And I will never forget him. And I will never forget the impact that he has had in my life. I am the person I am today because of him. And uh, his legacy will live on forever. And, um, and we miss you, Coach. And we love you. And this is so amazing, everyone out here today, and being able to... Um, to rename the soccer field in memory of both these coaches. So, thank you. If you um, know anything about Providence, you know that probably the best word to describe Providence is family. And uh, we're grateful <laughs> and honored that we've got some reps and members of, of the Spracklin and Williamson families here today. We're going to present a plaque uh, to them. And, um, and two of those folks are going to speak. Jenny Spracklin Lang is going to speak, and Steve Williamson is going to speak to us as well. So first, we're going to um, ask Jenny to come on up. We're grateful for you and your willingness to be here today. I know this is, this is very emotional for us, um, and uh, I know it's emotional for many of you too. Um, thank you, Jenny, and, and we, we'd love to hear your heart right now. Uh, Y'all might have to bear with me for a minute here. Ooh. I don't know why I didn't think I was going to be emotional, but you walk back on this field and there's so many things that come back to your mind. I was remembering, I think, the last time I stood on this field here, it was Sarah's senior, uh, senior night. And I remember the picture that they took lined up here, all the seniors on John's team. 
this is back when we were dating. Um, but Dr. Vaught, John called him Mr. Vaught, so that's what goes through my mind. Mr. Vaught um, kind of stole my intro. Um, it's really hard to summarize in two or three, four, five minutes of life. Um, like Johnny and like John, these men that they lived so well. How do you summarize that in such a short amount of time? How do you pick one story when there's so many stories that go through your, through your mind? But when I thought about if you knew John, one thing you would know about John is that he was passionate about the Word of God and he was passionate about soccer. He might not have shown it externally, but in his heart you knew that he loved those things. I'll never forget one of the first times I ever met him. We were talking, and he said, hey, um, I just want to give you something. I, I, um, I kind of, in my spare time, I, uh, I wrote a, a summary of the Old Testament, kind of from, you know, each book, page and a half on each, about 200 pages. And then there was one on the prophets. And he's like, you know, just in my spare time. Like, like teachers have spare time, especially, you know, at a, a small school where he's lined the fields before. And I thought, who does something like that? Who in their spare time summarizes scripture, the Bible? And uh, that's when I knew that this, this man, John Spracklin, was a very unique individual. That he was one of a kind. And he did love God's word and know God's word in a way that um, I've met few people who, who do. Uh, and he had a passion for uh, God's word. And he loved, loved, loved teaching that to the students here at Providence. And then uh, years later in Miami uh, w with uh, Campus Crusade, which is now crew, um, he did such a great job. And then his other passion is soccer. And John knew that when you throw a soccer ball down, it's the universal language. People come and they play, and all the cultural and the religious and the ethnic differences that might keep you apart, a soccer ball covers that in so many ways. You just throw a ball out, and people will break those barriers and come and be united. And I remember one time we counted how many different countries we were able to share the gospel with in Miami because of soccer, through our relationships with uh, people in the soccer community in Miami. And we counted 50 countries that we were able to share the gospel with because um, we played soccer with these people. I mean, John played, I just kind of watched. He would laugh at me because I'm not a very good soccer player. Um, though I, I fake it well. Um, but those were the things that he was passionate about. And so it's just so, I've thought so many times how humbled he would be and how honored he would be and how he would think that this is so undeserved because he just loved, loved Providence so much. There were so many times after he had left that he would think maybe one day I could come back and, and teach and coach and he just missed the school so much. And so I, I love that the things that John stood for are the very things that Providence stands for too. And so um, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you and, and receive this great treasured honor um, for the Spracklin family. Thank you very much. And now, Steve is going to come share. Uh, this is Jonathan's brother. Wow, what a privilege to be out here with you guys today. Um, th this is a blessing in so many ways. And uh, I, I haven't seen Jenny in so many years. But man, I had a, the, the, obviously the awesome privilege of, of being impacted and influenced by my little brother, Johnny. Oh. But uh, I also had the privilege of being impacted and influenced by John Spracklin. Um, I had the chance to, to coach with John. I coached the JV girls for several years while he was the varsity coach here. And one of the really reasons he kind of reeled me into that, because I had a heart for young people. And I had a heart to have an impact and influence on young people's lives. And that's what John was about, and that's what he was doing. You know, to have an impact and an influence for Jesus Christ in the lives of young people through whatever platform we have. And this is one of the most beautiful platforms, isn't it? in playing soccer. So this is just an incredible blessing and an incredible privilege to be here today to, to really you know honor what God has done in two men, to really honor what God has done through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God working out of two vessels of His that happen to minister here within the Providence family. So we're really just honoring the Lord today and, and what He does in and through lives that are yielded to Him. And I know both of those men, as Jenny said, would be extremely humbled by all this because both of those men want our eyes, the eyes of their athletes and their students pointed onto one person, and it's Jesus Christ.